Oh, fuck. The Trunco got you. <laughs> I'm Robert Coastal GX, just crossing Port Isabella Causeway, heading to South Padre Island. Today we're gonna do a little overnight camping trip. I don't have any special events planned. I'm not traveling with anyone. I am meeting a couple of friends out there, and uh, but that's about it. I really have nothing in mind today. It's yeah, I'm just gonna be winging it and see what happens. A lot of the videos that I do are, as you well know, unscripted. I am so looking forward to this solo trip. I'm gonna stay overnight. I'm gonna do some fishing. Hopefully uh, my buddy brought a cast net and uh, cause I forgot mine. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go out there, have a good time. And this time around, I brought some T-bones. Looking forward to that, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. I guess they're not charging here at the entrance. My buddy Ray was here yesterday. He said the entrance was a little loose, but I mean, yeah, it is loose, but it's not, uh, I mean, it's kind of compact still. Not a big deal. Dang, guys. So besides the, see the cliff, you can barely, you can see it there how it just, uh, the high tides, the recent high tides just ate up the cliffs here, I mean the dunes, but there's so much trash, man. We were here for that uh, trash pickup uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I can tell you the trash situation is, is a lot worse, man. What's going on, How you man? Doing, bud? doing I great. Love your ride, man. Thank you, thank you. It looks awesome. Hi there. Doing? It's my dad. <laughs> hey, so what's the what's the situation? When did you guys get here? Uh, we just actually we got in about seven. I got in about seven. They got in a little bit later, but uh, it's been pretty um, active right here on that first sandbar. There's a lot of small fish, mullet, uh, finger mullet. Uh, there's some shiner looking fish. I'm not sure what kind of bait fish that is. But uh, we tossed the, the net out. We got some bait. And yeah. I just got a, a pretty big catfish right now. But yeah. we're just starting out. Okay, just starting out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and you were right, man. There's a bunch of trash. And the landscape has changed dramatically. Yeah, dramatically. Yeah. I almost didn't recognize it coming in. Yeah. But yeah, it hurts me to see all this trash out here. We need to do another uh, beach cleanup. It's always exciting running into the Prodigy fishing team, especially when they're wrestling a bull shark. It takes courage and strength to handle and safely release these powerful fish. Now that we're on the topic of strength, let me tell you what I'm doing to improve my manliness. We'll talk to the angler right after this important message. Hey guys, Robert here with Coastal GX. I'm actually here at the Men Clinic over here in Mission and I've been getting ready for adventure, been getting all my gear ready, but I guess I've been neglecting myself in all this time. And what I want to do is I want to prepare myself for these epic adventures that we're going to be having in the next few months. I'm so excited. I can't wait to change my life. I can't wait to take you on this journey of change, positive change. And we're going to get up, get out, do something here at the Men Clinic today. I met with Sulema, one of several wellness coordinators at the Men Clinic. If you're not balanced, whether it's with thyroid or with hormones, you're not going to be able to maintain the weight the way you should. She carefully documented my concerns and introduced me to Dr. Jorge Miranda, MD. I was due a physical examination, but I will graciously spare you the details. Join me on the journey to a healthier life by calling 956 581 
2168 or visit their website to book your appointment today. Caught another one almost identical last night. We have about seven sharks that we've caught so far, ranging from six feet to three feet, you know, a bunch of other fish that we've caught, but mainly we target sharks out here in South Padre Island. Um, that one was about five and a half around that area. Five and a half. I can't remember, we have the measurements, but it's around five and a half. So every shark, you know, is different in the way it fights, you know. This one had a lot of, you know, head shakes and stuff like that, but also feels like you're dragging in a lot of weight, you know, like even though it's not as big, they feel a lot heavier. Hammerheads are definitely, you know, a stronger fight. Um, same thing as black tips, you know, sometimes they jump out of the air too and stuff. So, you know, every shark's different. We, uh, we just tagged that one and released it for the Texas Shark Rodeo, so that's what we do out here. You know, we tag sharks, we get DNA samples, you know, fin clips um, for research, you know, we send it into them. And, you know, we enjoy catching sharks and we're also, you know, helping out, you know, the shark population and stuff. We always, we're always catch and release, you know. The cool thing about riding solo is that you can go exploring and pretty much do whatever you want. This spot is different. This wasn't here. But look, it seems like uh, the water's been coming in. It's already formed a little channel. It's not much, but formed it anyway. It's pretty crazy. I arrived at the newly formed cut at mile marker 19 and noticed something very peculiar. Man, what is that over there? Like, there's some sort of, is that a car? Looks like the frame of a, oh, we gotta go take a look at that. Oh, he's catching, that gentleman is catching plenty of, plenty of live bait. Pretty neat. I met a nice couple catching bait. I had forgotten my casting net, so I asked Jerry if he could hook me up with a net full. Okay guys, so check it out. Something very interesting. I came out here to the new cut over here at mile 19, mile marker 19. And I mean, I don't have to tell you guys just how extraordinary, you know, this place is now. Uh, man, we lost, <laughs> we lost some real estate here at South Padre Island, uh, at least for now. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure one day it's going to get better, but for now, uh, there's no way you can go across. I mean, you can walk, I guess, right now. That gentleman over there, fisherman, he walked across. However, when I came out here, I noticed something very interesting. And uh, let me fire up this other GoPro so I can explain a little bit more about what's going on here. But we found this uh, abandoned uh, car, all right? It's upside down. And uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting. You know, I was like, well, maybe it was washed up. Maybe it was washed up uh, by the high tides, the recent high tides. The truth of the matter, according to one of the people that I ran into over here, he's telling me that this vehicle has been here for a long, long time. It does look like an older model something, but he tells me that every 15 years or so when there's a major change out here, that's when the car, you know, this, uh, this hunk of junk, you know, appears. And uh, it kind of makes a lot of sense. Now, here's another interesting thing. Another gentleman told me, and we're about to find out right now, he says that there was a black tip shark that was stuck under this thing. The head was stuck under there. Well, the part of the stuck shark was true, only it wasn't the head that was stuck. I was able to obtain this footage from my friend Tanya Tallard from Costa Cleanups. So check it out for yourself. I found a truck and then I'm looking at the truck and look at that. It's a shark, a dead shark.
Our beloved beach truly is precious and full of surprises. I had a great time exploring, but it was time to meet up with my friend Ray, Henry, and Noe back at camp. I set up a temporary camp by the water and tried my luck at fishing. Moments later, my friends Javi and Luana showed up and joined in on the fun. Guys, we'll get right back to the video, but first let me tell you about my friends at the South Texas Hearing Center in Edinburgh. Right now, they're honoring our local heroes by offering a 50% discount off the retail price of their premium hearing aids for law enforcement, first responders, medical professionals, and their families. That's right, all of the family members. Give them a call at 956-533-0594 to set up your free hearing evaluation. South Texas Hearing Center, hear live. Something got him. And the tail. Oh man. You got yourself a popano, bro. Oh, that's awesome. Good job, Ray. <laughs> Ray continued on his lucky streak when Brian and Mark made a last minute appearance. Well, well, well. The day went by way too fast and we were getting hungry. Javi and Luana broke out their homemade shrimp ceviche with mango bits while Ray prepared the main course, una carnita asada. Look up the the, the, the toast wrap. We were wrapping up our dinner when a new friend showed up near the camp. Garrett and his dog, Leo, got stuck within yards of our camp, so Ray and our friends decided to give them a hand. We don't want to hook up on a ball, on a ball hitch. That's not normally what we want to do. There's not going to be any yanking. It's probably not the safest place to put it, but in this particular case, there are no other recovery points. So it's just, it's just going to have to be at that spot but um, it's going to be a very slow maneuver that Ray is going to perform and uh, we're going to get the Ranger and that sweet boy. What is he, a healer? Yeah. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to be safe. He's, we're going to get him out. Beautiful. Look at this. <laughs> cha -cha, cha -cha. Feeling kind of cute. <laughs> We're gonna go see what our buddy uh, Ray is taking care of. Let's go. It's dark. It's dark. It's dark. It's dark. <laughs> yeah. you, you can. Yeah. You can barely. Oh, you can barely see him right there. You saw a shade of uh, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, skinny guy. What do we got here, bro? I'm gonna lift it up real quick. Out. We got some, uh, oh uh, man! Some ribs and stuff. We're just smoking. We're smoking. We're smoking. Yeah, yeah, smoking. Oh, let me see what he's got. Sure. Hells yeah! How is it, Mark? <laughs> it's spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> it's got mango. <laughs> hey guys. So we are, for the first time, we're trying out this Iron Man awning at night. As you can see, it finally got the LED uh, to good use. It has served us very well today. We're with my guest right here, Javi, and his wife. What's your? Luana. Luana, okay. Javi, Luana, and of course, you can't have a video. Yes. You can't have a video without Mark, okay? That's right. We can't have one. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And of course I'm eating. And of course he's eating. 
We're 15 minutes into the video and I managed to squeeze an entire day in this short time. It was time to get some much needed sleep under that full moon. Hey, good morning. I had promised Ray and Garrett breakfast in the morning, so I rushed and got my lazy butt up. I said farewell to Ray, tore down camp, and got to hang out with Garrett and Leo for a bit. This duo had a unique camping setup, and I just had to know more. You must have one of the most simplistic little uh, contained uh, units over here, man. Tell me about it. Like, what, what, first of all, what's, what are you driving? Uh, so this is just like a late 90s Ford Ranger, little indestructible things. Um, no two-wheel drive, nothing fancy there, but um, you know, kind of truck that you can fix anything on. If you ever break down, all you need is a toolbox with you, and um, you know you're pretty much set. How do you deal with a soft sand, man? Well, the biggest thing is really just you got to air down a lot, and uh, you just have to remember that you're in a two-wheel drive vehicle. So if you don't keep momentum through the soft sections, you slow down. If you come up on a campsite in the middle of the night, like last night and they're just tooling around, you're gonna sink in anything, you know, deeper than a foot of sugar, for sure. Uh, do you carry a shovel? No, I carry a Frisbee. Works just as well. <laughs> you dig yourself out with a Frisbee? Yeah, and I mean, I start an occasional bonfire as well, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, nowadays you can get truck tents made custom for any vehicle, so, you know, for like 150 bucks, you can get a nice setup, keep you up off the ground, throw like an air mattress in there that you can pump up with an inverter um, and you're pretty much good to go. Have an extension cord with you as well um, just so that you can have power inside your tent. Um, you know, for the cold nights, bring a nice blanket or two, put them in, you know, a cold ice chest or something. And then really just make sure you've got a way to get up into your setup without putting a bunch of sand into it. So bring a floor mat, have another little towel there to really brush yourself off well. And then just make sure you try to keep it as clean as possible, you know, for however many days you're going to be out there. Um, and then bonus trick, bring a couple extra sets of sheets. If one gets dirty, too sandy, pop it off, fresh sheets, you're good to go. If you're not one for fighting the rip currents, get yourself an old board, tie your bait to it, throw your rod in the holder, open it up, paddle out. Whenever you're ready, drop your line, give it a good yank to sink it, paddle yourself back. Sometimes you've caught a fish by the time you get back to shore. It makes a good workout too. I say simple means less things can go wrong. And you know, Murphy's Law has its way of rearing his head out here. Um, the more time you spend out in the dunes, out on the beach like this, the more time you get to understand how easy it is for things to you know, go wrong. And in my experience, the more complicated your setup is, the more careful you have to be. I'm gonna tell you, just to uh, wrap up my experience from overnight, it was terrible, guys. It was terrible. Probably the worst, the worst overnight stay I've had up, up here, and it's all because of uh, me being concerned about that awning that I installed, that Iron Man on awning. Now, it works great, it's functional, it's awesome, but it, it just, the South Padre Island winds are way too much for it. Just too much for it. I mean, I had, we had sandbags, you know, trying to keep it down. We had uh, uh, the tethers, you know, the stakes. I tried lowering it down. So, you know, I tried positioning the vehicle uh, so that the wind wouldn't be hitting it, you know, uh, broadsiding it. Nothing was enough. I, I woke up like three times at night you know, concerned, it was flopping all over the place. I just had to, you know, secure it how, the best I could and uh, put it away. So I don't think, I don't think that awning, that attached awning is gonna work. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I got a lot of positive feedback, by the way, from a lot of people out here. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'm not a shy person. You wanna, you know, 
walk up to me and say hello. I'll be more than happy to say hello and, and have a conversation with you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like people, I like talking to people, so it, it's all good, it's all good. No, you know, don't, don't, don't feel bad about that. But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing, hit that like button, share it, and uh, comment down below, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Let's see how it goes.